This is Questions of Courage, a podcast from the youth section at the Goetheanum, hosted by Nathaniel Williams. Welcome everyone to Questions of Courage. Today I, I'd like to speak about um, something I alluded to in the last episode, which was that one of the reasons that the kind of cultural, the new register of, of um, experience that I think you can see in some of the countercultural movements and also the art and even legal discourse um, from the 1960s and 70s, most significantly within um, many English-speaking contexts, um, that one of the reasons that it felt so far away was because of the digital uh, technology that we have developed and that we have started to integrate into our lives more and more. The digital, I could just say the digital revolution. And I'd like to talk about that um, today. Uh, it, it kind of comes out of the, the um, discussion in the last episode, because you know, looking at a phenomenon like the Black Panther movie or the Marvel Universe, we immediately, you know, even though there's, as I pointed out, there's something radiating through the kind of content, the storylines that has its roots in um, the 60s through, for instance, Marvel Comics, um, but also through this interest in trying to find cultures where spiritual understanding and experience were felt as imminent as part of life and not as something in a faraway heaven or some metaphysics, something in itself that we can never actually access. And yet when we look at the popular uh, culture today and we see this content um, so widely available, at the same time, it's in a, a medium that in a way is, is um, kind of power of its own. So I'd like to, to talk about this and, and, and just, of course, today just make a kind of a few observations. But um, I'm aware that young, many young people today that, you, that are, you know, have come of age with smartphones attached to them, so to say, you know, I mean, since 2012, I mean, for, for the generation, for young people who are listening, I mean, you are the first people who have come of age and perhaps through adolescence connected so strongly with the internet and with technology, digital technology, it's in particular. And um, I know from working with young people, this is a a really a kind of dramatic experience and 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 even traumatizing experience for some. Um, I know perhaps not the majority, um, but certainly want to bring attention to that also for young people who are listening um, and might have. It doesn't matter if we call it addiction or not, but like what they feel like is an unbalanced relationship with digital devices or their smartphones or, or their computers. And, you know, in the, in the last four years, everyone's kind of been paying attention because the, the um, just experience of basic well-being of young people in their teens has changed in ways that is not for the better. I mean, intense experiences of anxiety and depression and fear. Um, there's a whole investigative series um, in the New York Times about particularly this adolescent mental health. And um, yeah, I want to speak about some things that seem very important related to this this experience and I, I hope that it can be of service to uh, discussions and, young, and, and groups of young people that are maybe um, 
struggling or, or just basically interested in this situation they find themselves in. It's a first generation in a way to be so fully integrated with the new technology in their, in their, as they develop through adolescence and, and into life. And um, I would like on another occasion to speak about some deeper spiritual perspectives uh, that um, I think are essential and certainly not well known, or, um, but which have to do with the work of the youth section at the Goethe Anum here in Dornach, Switzerland, but also the section's work around the world and, and talking about spiritual dimensions of, of the experience of being young today and particularly with and for young people who are interested in exploring spirituality and but first I'd like to just speak about some of the things that that seem clear and how it connects to experience before I mean when, when we look at like the 1960s I mean there were televisions we had screen culture in a way but it was it was just nothing compared to what um, the amount of interaction and experience young people today have with screens. And uh, you pretty much could just sit in front of it and change channels. Um, <laughs> and uh, there was a very different experience. And, um, you know, what I was describing about young people at that time, I mean, you know, the fact that they started to, to, to have this kind of deeper experience of their own thoughts of, this more creative experience of their own um, ideas and also of one another and of themselves. They also, um, they, they didn't necessarily go, they weren't necessarily meditating in Russia. That was just something that was emerging for them. And there was, when they met, what was being offered to them and kind of the, the traditions and the ways of living in the United States uh, for instance, um, they felt like it was like they weren't meeting real things. That it was somehow all empty. It was like there were masks or thin layers of uh, that were obscuring things. And they wanted to find something that was real. And um, I pointed out in the last episode, they they started looking in many different cultures and and exploring the peculiarity of kind of European materialism and also uh, American materialism, which is kind of colonial branch of Europe. And um, yeah, but then we see this, this huge development. Uh, before many of, if you're young and you're listening to this, it was before many of you were born, you know, it's um, the 1990s, the internet starts to be <laughs> available and very slow version. You would not recognize it at all from what you have grown up with. And, um, and then, you know, there were these cell phones, but they were these little flip phones or Nokia's or Blackberries with these little type pads on them. And really until, um, you know, t I guess 10 years ago, smartphones that are now everywhere were not really affordable and uh, a common uh, you know common for everyone to have one but already in uh, you know 20 years ago we have to admit that there was a, a lot of young people were spending their time online and also when they were together spending time on their phones texting chatting facebook which is now kind of like an old social media platform was was kind of you know, coming into the world at that time. And, and, um, and then, you know, social life, like experience started to change because it was like this new mask. It wasn't an old mask, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say why I'm saying mask now because, uh, in a moment, but you know, when, when many young people were experiencing kind of the traditions and the culture and the ways of thinking they were coming of age and couldn't meet who they were, then in this digital revolution, it was like they started to make avatars of themselves, whether that's a profile on Facebook or even in a video game, an actual kind of digital representation of themselves. 
And now I can, I can use the word mask because it's something that we kind of put on and other people meet and we're behind it, you know, like a mask. Um, and, you know, a beautiful mask, like a piece of artwork is something where it reveals something, you know, reveals maybe something also about some character in a play or, you know, you might think of a movie where there were masks or puppets that were used. But these masks, and now I'm talking more really about the experience of young people as they describe it, it's like they have, you know, you can go into the internet, you can have like TikTok accounts and also um, Facebook before and Instagram and you create these kind of sometimes called online personas but the thing is 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 they kind of have it almost like an independent existence from one it, it's they can it's not necessarily the case that they do and you're young people listening you're the only ones to judge how much this resonates with your experience but um, many young people describe how they, they have all these connections in a way which are made possible through social media and um, cell phones and the internet and yet they feel like they're alone. And so I think that, you know, they, they feel like they're separated from others. They spend time more time alone and interact through digital technology you know and and it's interesting when you look at the experience of the generation that was coming from the 60s and coming of age in the 60s and 70s and how they experienced it was kind of a mask an old mask that was threatening to also overtake their identity and and their experience of authenticity and they wanted to know who they were so that a pattern that others made didn't prevail in the world so that they didn't follow the wrong God home and miss their star. They wanted to be true to their experience and so they were in a way felt like they were revolting against the mask. Now from the future there's another mask that appears coming in through a technology which certainly is going to grow and develop that we're going to be living with now for a long time. I'm certainly not speaking about digital technology in a way as if one would run away from it or condemn it. But still, I am speaking about it as if we have to try to look at it in its relationship to our experience today and also in our experience of Authenticity in the way I talked about it before. So here we can, we can, I just want to point, first is some just basic research has been done like by the sociologist Sherry Turkle um, who wrote a, a study largely talking to young people. It was published maybe 10, 15 years ago, Alone Together where she was just watching how young people would like, they would get together in groups, but then they would all have their phones. And you all know this. I mean, it's, it's, you can experience pretty much anywhere you go. Everyone has their phone. And um, it's complicated to actually to have an in-person conversation and to be present online, so to say, and connected through, say, your social media platforms, your email, your text, WhatsApp, Telegram, whatever it is. And so you kind of hang out in the same space, but actually, you kind of avoid having real-time conversations in the physical proximity where you are and you just um, you know prefer to even communicate with people that are sitting right next to you maybe through a text because there's a text group with other people that aren't present and um, and so you kind of like even when you're with people you might for instance find yourselves in order to kind of get in the mode of uh, the experience, like actually communicating through your devices, you know, and, and then some of the things that come out of this is just like, um, you know, young people kind of sharing that they, and also um, describing how they're just less, you know, they're less connected to kind of just real-time experience 
and um, just being present with one another, being present in a place, um, simple things like opening doors for one another or simple courtesies which certainly aren't the meaning of life but which do, um, you know, point somehow to our awareness of one another becoming somehow more, more difficult or less, less um, available. And yeah, I mean, here you kind of have, uh, I don't know, like a, 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 a difficulty, you know? And, and I know young people perhaps aren't all gonna feel like this is maybe doing their individual relationship to digital technology or social media justice. It doesn't matter. I actually find it interesting to look at some of the more difficult ones, young people who are having the most difficult time and trying to empathize with, with their experience. Yeah, but I, I think that, you know, when you read like a book, like, I mean, one of the most powerful writer, young writers today, um, who wrote, no one is talking about this. Um, a book about a uh, kind of young person who becomes famous for like online memes and contributions and, and like her experience of the portal and how, what she calls the internet, the portal and um, how it affected her life and also her relationship with friends and family and her own soul. And it's a novel, um, but it also kind of brings up, I think, something that would resonate with many people who, who um, are coming of age with these technologies and maybe not much understanding of them, you know? So I'd now like to make a characterization, like when I say the mask from the future, I think that it has a kind of cold character. And this character, I think it kind of, it makes us less able to connect through warmth with uh, the places that we are. We kind of almost get a little bit, uh, it freezes us a little bit. It kind of freezes us into these avatar situations where we also feel pressure to create an avatar or a presentation of ourselves that somehow is in line with um, kind of norms and expectations of what we have to see is often like just kind of hyper consumerist culture or um, even political opinions or perspectives that um, might be expected or uh, of us or um, very popular and and yet and, and then when, when our avatar, our mask, or our profile, this, this kind of image of ourselves that we, we develop a real attachment to, you know, when, it, it's, when we experience kind of cyber bullying or like um, also some part of the image is like made fun of or attacked, it's like, or we can't create the perfect image. What we feel like is a perfect image, it can, it also like, it kind of paralyzes us, you know, it, it kind of has like paralyzing effect, almost like we're being frozen, like our, our, the, the kind of agility and nimbleness of our, of our being is being taken from us in a way. And we, we have a lot of fear and anxiety and um, also feelings of isolation and loneliness. These are the most common um, kind of reports from young people who are really struggling with this experience. And yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons that, you know, the 1960s seems so far away is because this was not something young people who were coming of age in the 1960s were growing up with and having to deal with. This is something that you, young people who are listening right now, you are the first human beings to come of age with is so intertwined in your development. And I hope to be able to speak from a deeper perspective um, about how this is related to some of the experiences of the new spirituality and I think the human spirit in general um, another time. Because 
one of the things which I will return to is that, you know, when you look at the, the experience that yet many people are having with digital technology, I think there's two levels to look at. And one is how we're using it. And um, we know that there are just teams of behavioral psychologists that, that are trying to think how they can kind of compete in the, what's called the attention economy. They want to get everyone's attention because if they can get people's attention, they can make money from corporations and businesses through advertising. And so they study kind of the basic, some of the most basic dynamics of our being a person of consciousness. And, and then they try to create platforms or online uh, platforms where we interact, where we're most likely to kind of be drawn to them. You know, even maybe if it's not good for our own health, if we're drawn to them, um, because they can profit off of it. And of course, this is, this is no secret to, to anyone today. Uh, and I don't want to dwell on it, but it's kind of like a, a, a programming side, which I think it's right for young people to feel like they're being betrayed in many ways by corp, uh, Silicon Valley, many people working in Silicon Valley, and also many psychologists. Um, this, of course, has been described by people like Tristan Harris, who used to work for Google, or Sushana Zuboff, who wrote this book, The Age of Surveillance Capitalism. It's very well known today. Um, but there's another dimension to this, which I think is a deeper dimension, and it doesn't get as much attention, but, but is truly um, perhaps even more important in a way to understand. And that's how the digital, the pictures and the experience of pictures and interactive symbols and everything that we experience when we're surfing online or spending time on Instagram or TikTok or just watching Netflix movies or whatever it is, how this picture world is connected to the kind of picture world that started to emerge very strongly in the 1960s. Also when people started to experiencing thoughts kind of almost like pictures or like works of art, that they were connected with the heart, that there was a kind of spiritual dimension to, to meeting other people or to thinking about, in the case of Jane Goodall, you know, what a mammal is, if it's a gorilla or, um, or not. And, and that there was this kind of this deepening experience of pictures that started to emerge. And now we have these new pictures that are coming about. And to try to understand something deeper about them, that will have to be uh, taken up at another time. Um, but today I just wanted to introduce one of the reasons that the register and tone of authenticity and also of a kind of deeper register of experience that we find in the 60s emerging and which has been so successful that you know not only do corporations who want to um, influence democracies use it as a way of fighting court cases like we find in Citizens United but also huge entertainment uh, you know, um, industries like Hollywood use these kind of stories of spiritual transformation and also understanding and meaning as the storylines for their blockbuster hits. And, um, you know, so the success or in one way, and those are, of course, two things that I'm not arguing for, that those things would happen, but it points towards the kind of widespread appeal of a certain spiritual orientation. Why does that, the, why do the 60s feel so far away today in a way, despite that, this, these successes? And at least one of the reasons, other than the fact that it's been heavily corrupted by commercial interests and also kind of also all kinds of challenges that are implicit in a renewal from the ground up. 
but it's because a new and powerful technology has emerged. We have been part in bringing it about and it is having an influence on our ability to be connected to ourselves and to be connected to one another in this same um, kind of deeper tone that I've been trying to describe. When I return to this, I'd like to talk about um, anthroposophic contemplative practice in relationship to um, digital, uh, just some basic observations um, in relationship to this digital experience. Um, and I'll say more about that so that it doesn't sound so mysterious. But in essence, um, it's a way of trying to come to a deeper knowledge of experience through paying more focused and dedicated attention to spiritual dimensions of our experience in a kind of disciplined way. And, um, but more about that later. Um, so this, these, these uh, episodes are, of course, quite easy uh, from one technical side to produce. Um, but on the other hand, I am being supported by the communications team at the Goethe Anum and um, the, the weekly, the Wochenschrift, which is a publication, and Goethe Anum TV. And, um, and also, I, I, I would like to, you know, these are great, but I also very appreciative of the possibility for young people to work together and also to come here to the Goethe Anum to work together. And... And so uh, one of the part, a uh, part of this uh, podcast or video podcast is, is, is also to offer free contributions on themes that will be of interest to young people and also to invite you to consider uh, making a contribution to a youth access and project fund, which will go to support um, young people traveling to gatherings on um, the new spirituality and anthroposophy um, here at the Goethe Anum or also at other places and also build up a fund for student projects connected to these themes. Um, and you can donate uh, on the Youth Section website and there's actually a drop down menu that says Youth Access and Project Fund and if you donate there we'll know that it was um, you know, in connection with questions of courage or we also have we're reaching out to people to donate to the fund in other ways. Um, but thank you, and until next time.